Hi, I'm David Davis from Actual Tech Media. We're here at VMworld 2018. I'm excited to be joined by Megan Lee. She's with Product Marketing at HashiCorp. How you doing, Megan? I'm good, thank you for having me, David. Yeah, thanks for being on our, our Actual Tech Media you know, TV roadcast here. Um, so I'm a big fan of HashiCorp. We interviewed the founder of the company, uh, Mitchell Hashimoto, uh, on our podcast. A really, really inspiring story. And I've been you know, off and on trying to play with the different tools and learn more about it. So it's, it's exciting to have you on. Um, so you know, I know that you all are relatively new here at VMworld. It's your first time. Our first one, yeah. We're so, happy to be here, yep. Yeah. So HashiCorp, when I think of HashiCorp, I think of you know, cloud native and containers and, and you know, DevOps type uh, use cases. So I'm kind of curious, what do vSphere admins need to know about HashiCorp? How can it help vSphere admins? Yeah. So all of our products, um, so a lot of people might know Vagrant, Hacker. We won't go into those too much, but those were kind of the first ones, and they're open source products. But now we have the, the suite, we call it, um, which is Terraform and Vault and Console and Nomad. So those are our four products. Okay. So we're going to probably, we'll just talk about, it's hard to cover all of them, so we'll talk about Terraform, and yeah. Terraform's our product for vision. So if you're a VMware admin or, you know, doing a private cloud or something like yeah. that, it sounds like you were one of those. Yeah, I used to be, point. I was yeah. a server admin, network admin, IT manager, and we, and we first implemented ESX Server 3 way back when. Yeah. I'm dating myself. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, you know, amazing to us, enlightening to us that virtualization could virtualize these physical hosts and suddenly we could bring up new applications, new virtual machines, you know, fast and easy. Um, but what is, how can HashiCorp help me today? Right, so you, you saw the benefits of the agility aspect. You can move faster, do things more um, flexible. So how did you provision your, um, your virtual instances? It was all really manual. I mean, I think when we got smarter, we finally started using templates, mm -hmm. you know. We had some template operating systems, so we didn't have to install the OS every single time. We could just uh, provision from the clone from a template and install our applications. Yeah. All right, that sounds about on par. So yeah. what were some of the, you, there was probably some challenges that came with that. There were, yeah. I mean, because when you clone from a template, you know, there's a lot of individual settings in, in an OS mm -hmm. that are that need to be different. You know, the GUI, GUID, and Windows. You know, the IP address, the domain name, host name. You know, administrator password. All those things need to be sort of customized. Right. Right. So what Terraform does, HashiCorp Terraform, is it allows you now to use a configuration language or code, actually, to define what your infrastructure is going to be. So in your case, you say, hey, I'm going to use my provider, VMware, and maybe this is specifically for vSphere, and I want to provision this resource. Now, mind you, you're not doing this in a UI or anything. You're actually writing lines of code that defines that in a Terraform file. So all of your infrastructure now gets codified. You can define all of those things like, hey, I want to provision this application onto my VMware um, or my virtual machine instance. Um, whatever those configurations are, you can define that. And then you execute that to the Terraform engine that does all the automation, and it goes off and provisions that on your VMware infrastructure. Okay. So everything is all code, and then it goes, does automation, and provisions your infrastructure. So there's a couple of things I heard you say, manual, and then you didn't really call this out, but manual comes with like air prone, like errors can come up, yeah. right? So it's hard to keep up with all the developer requests, and then potentially you're introducing errors into that process because you're trying to configure so many things, so many different variables. So now there's two things. You can do the automation, keep up with developer requests a lot faster. And on sec the second part is because it's code, you now treat your infrastructure the same way your application developers treat their code. So you write it down so it's documented, it's then versioned, it then gets tested and reviewed, and then it gets executed. So then it gets provisioned. If you ever want to update something, you just go do it again. If you want to provision more instances, you just go execute that script file. You're not having to redo all the work. Awesome, awesome. So instead of having to provision, say, 10 virtual machines manually for, let's say, an in-house application that we want to deploy in the virtual infrastructure, I simply write a, a code, a, a, a script, if you will, or whatever your, it's called. Yep, and your instances are just a variable. So it okay. could be one this time, it could be 10 next time. Okay. Yeah. And then once I deploy that to vSphere, can I 
deploy it again to vSphere and then to AWS or you know other cloud environments? You can. So if you wanted to do it then on AWS, you could use the AWS provider. Um, there, so there's a Terraform provider for all the different infrastructure types. So there's AWS, there's VMware, and then within each provider there's a bunch of different resources. So you would just pick your resource that you want to provision on AWS and go off and do that. Okay, and I would guess a common question you might get from vSphere admins used to working in a GUI is, whoa, code, I, I don't know how to code. Right. How hard is it to create this code that you're talking yeah. about? So Terraform was created to be a very simple language to get started with. It's human readable and machine executable. So if I went and looked at a Terraform script, I'd know exactly what it does, even if you wrote it, because it's all human readable. But I know that can be still kind of daunting. So the other thing we have is the concept of modules. And modules are pre-built. So the VMware team helps us build modules and the providers. Those modules get published. So if you actually just wanted to spin up a VM, there's a module out there on the registry. You could just go grab that and get started with that today. Oh, kind of like an app store, if you will. Just kind a piece of code. Kind of like an app store, yeah. You don't even have to go start from scratch. You can just pick up that module. OK, nice. Yeah. So for people who are interested in learning more about you know, Terraform, maybe trying this out. What do you recommend? What steps should they take? Yeah, well, to get started, download Terraform. You can go to terraform.io and you can download the open source version for free. Okay. If you want to check out the modules, like I just mentioned, you can go to registry.terraform.io and all the modules are there and they're usually um, categorized by vendor. So there will be, should be a VMware vendor there if you want to get started with those. So those are the two resources I would start with. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Megan. All right, thanks for having me, David. Thank you.